Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to show you five Pottery Barn dupes slash inspired inspiration pieces. And I'm really excited to show you guys what I came up with. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So for this first one, this is mostly an inspiration piece, not necessarily a dupe. When I was scrolling on the Pottery Barn website, I was seeing a lot of tiles, a lot of that kind of tile print on all sorts of different pieces. And then I saw a lot of mirrors and I decided to kind of combine the two and this is what I came up with. So I'm gonna start by taking four one by twos that I've cut down. Two of them are 18 inches long and the other two are 19 inches long. And then I have this piece of scrap wood that my husband cut out for me that measures out as an 18 inch square. The first thing that I'm gonna do is start painting the sign itself, the wood piece in my white Waverly chalk paint. And I just gave this one good coat. I wasn't too worried about it being perfect or everything being completely covered up because I am gonna go over that with a stencil. And then I'm gonna stain all of my frame pieces in my Craftsmart stain in brown. This is one of my favorite water-based stains. So I just go ahead and take my brush, apply it, and then I wipe the excess off with a paper towel. So I'm just gonna use this just like I would a stain. And then I found this absolutely adorable pattern over on Cricut Access. I just duplicated it several times and cut it out. I'm going to use this as a stencil and because my sign is pretty big, I did have to piece a couple of sheets of this together. I just applied it using my transfer tape. I will remove my transfer tape when all of that is good and <laughs> stuck on my sign. Now because I don't have stencil vinyl, I am using removable vinyl so make sure that when you're using a stencil with vinyl that you're either using stencil vinyl or removable vinyl. And then I'm just going to take some white chalk paint. I'm going to go over the entire sign over all this stencil. This just helps it prevent some bleeding and I honestly was a bit messy with this so I wasn't too worried about it, but if you want to prevent that bleeding, you want to make sure that you seal it like this. That's just what I do and what has, has seemed to work for me. And then I'm going to go in with my Waverly Chalk Paint in Agave. I'm just taking an old brush that is pretty fluffy and I'm going to just do up and down dabbing motions over the entire thing. I'm going to cover it all. And then once that is all painted and everything is dry, I'm gonna sit down on my bed, turn on a TV show and start weeding this project. This ended up taking me really, really long. <laughs> I'm talking like a good couple of hours to get all the little pieces off. I don't know why I didn't think of this when I was actually creating the, the stencil and realizing that it was going to take me so long and there were so many little tiny pieces. <laughs> so in the end, I think it turned out beautiful. But just know if you do it as, you know, a DIY like this and you use this complicated of a design, it is going to take you forever to weed. <laughs> but again, it turned out beautiful in the end. So it was all worth it. So once I have my entire piece completely weeded, I'm going to take some wood glue. I'm gonna apply it to my one by twos and I am just going to start assembling my frame. I also used a mixture of some hot glue wood glue so that I would get that immediate hold. And that stuff works really well, plus the wood glue. So my piece is super, super sturdy and I didn't have to use any kind of finishing nails or anything. You could opt in to use some staples on the back with a staple gun. And then lastly, I'm gonna take this mirror that I picked up from the Target dollar spot. I'm gonna apply some clear Gorilla Glue and some of my hot glue to the back. I'm gonna put it right in the middle and that's all you gotta do for this DIY. I 
really quick, if you guys are new to my channel, hey, my name's Liz. I love everything DIY and crafting. If that's something that you enjoy, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. And if you didn't know, I sell craft kits over on my website. These are unfinished wood kits that you can DIY and paint yourself. So I will leave my website link down below. They had so many fun ceramic pieces that I knew I wanted to try and recreate. I had purchased this milk jar or pottery piece from my local Goodwill quite a while ago and I thought this would be the perfect piece to try this kind of technique out on. So again, I picked up this piece from my local Goodwill. It was $4.49. I'm gonna use my heat gun to get that sticker off to lessen the amount of goo and stickiness that is on it. This works every time for me. I'm going to go through with a baby wipe and get this thing completely clean because this was a bit of a mess. It had been sitting around in my bedroom for probably about a year now and even still when I picked it up it was slightly gross. So I made sure to get it all nice and clean. And then I'm going to take this hazelnut chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to give the bottom half just a messy coat of paint in the picture on their website. The border of it on the top is very messy. There's, you know, pieces that are higher than each other, ridges and dips, and it just has that old rusty kind of look to it, which I absolutely love. So this was perfect for me because I was able to be super unperfect <laughs> and have it still look good. So I just went through, gave it one coat, and then I'm gonna dry it with my heat gun before I apply my second coat. I've noticed with pieces like this, if you start painting your second coat too soon, it's going to start removing that first coat. So you want to make sure that your first coat is completely dry before you end up going over it a second time. And then I'm just going to take my brush and kind of dab around here and there around the tops, the rim, the sides, the handles. I'm just kind of eyeing it, trying to see what looks good. I ended up taking a wipe and removing the parts that I didn't like. And I just love the ability to be able to play around with this. And if I didn't like it, I could remove it. And then I waited an entire night, I let it dry, and then I went back over it with a third coat of paint. And what I did here, which I absolutely love, is as your chalk paint is drying, I am dragging my brush right back over it and it creates this beautiful texture that I thought that this part of the pot just absolutely needed. And I think that it turned out so, so adorable. I absolutely love this piece. So as I was scrolling through, I saw so many planters and these ones just really stuck out to me. I love the concrete look, so I wanted to try my hand at duping one of these. Now I'm gonna take these three tile signs that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the tile insert. They do come out fairly easily. Some of them were already loose and coming out anyways. So I just popped all of those right out and I'm going to stack all three of these frames together. I'll put the tiles to the side and keep those of course for a later DIY sometime down the road. I will definitely be putting them back in my stash. And I'm just gonna start hot gluing all three of these frames together. Now I didn't want a big gluey mess on the outside of the frame so I'm going to take some glue on the inside in the seam where those two frames meet and I just piled some glue in there to keep them all nice and sturdy and that's what I did for all three of my frames. And then for the bottom of this, I'm gonna take one of those tiles and just hot glue it right back into place where it was. And then I wanted this piece to look like it was cement. So I'm gonna take my Waverly Chalk Paint Elephant. I'm gonna take some baking soda. And I did use a quite a bit of baking soda because I really wanted this 
to have a lot of texture and I wanted the paint to be really thick. So if you want that really thick kind of paint and texture to it, the more baking soda you add, it will be a thicker consistency. And I'm just gonna go through and paint the entire piece in this color. I'm gonna do about two coats of it and I went about, I'd say maybe, the first frame down on the inside just so that you wouldn't see that natural wood color if you happen to be right next to it or if whatever's inside it isn't covering it up. And after I get that piece painted, I'm going to start kind of doing a galvanized-ish kind of look to it. Concrete isn't all just one flat color, so I wanted to mix in some different shades of gray. I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and silver lining and this natural sponge, and I'm just going to start dabbing over the entire thing. Now, I go back and forth between this color and the elephant color to, until I got the way that I liked it. I mixed some more uh, baking soda in with the silver lining just to get as much texture that I could and make it look cement-like. <laughs> so really, this is all about playing around with your paint, doing a lot of dabbing, trading off between your light colors and your dark colors. And I just thought this was a lot of fun. There's no perfect way to do it. You can be as clean or as messy as you want and just have fun. I think this is the funnest thing about crafting that it's really just your own creation and doing what you think looks good. So once I was satisfied with the way that it looked, I took a skewer stick between those lines to really carve out the paint that seeped in between each of the frames, just so that it had a little bit more detail and dimension and you could see those three separate pieces. And I just filled it with some of my succulents that I picked up from Michaels. And that's it for this DIY. So I saw this tray on their website and while it is oblong and oval shape, I found this. It's actually a sign from Goodwill and it had those same bumpy ridges to it and I thought this would be perfect for me to spray paint and try to do a sort of dupe with it. So this is going to be the easiest DIY of all time. I'm taking this sign that I picked up from Goodwill. I paid about $6.49 for it, so a little bit more on the pricey side, but I loved all the bumps that it had around the frame. I just thought it was so much fun. So all I'm gonna do is remove that hanger on the back. I'm gonna take it outside. I'm gonna give it several coats of Rust-Oleum White Glossy Spray Paint. And then while that's drying, I'm gonna take these little knobs or feet that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna paint them white. I'll hot glue them onto the back of that sign. And that's all you gotta do for this DIY. And that's it for today's video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Let me know what your favorite project was. And if you enjoy dupes or inspirational kind of videos, let me know in the comments down below and I'll keep them coming. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.